Welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to talk about my Veritas uh, back saws. Uh, Veritas came out with several of these things. I just have the three. So I have a carcass saw, a crosscut saw, and a dovetail saw. And I'll talk about each and give a little review. To start off, the different saws are sort of rated based on their TPI. TPI number. And so uh, this one has a TP TPI, meaning teeth per inch. So it's the amount of teeth per inch on the saw. Now, I don't go ahead and try to judge that by getting a ruler out. I take their word for it. But usually, more, the less amount of teeth per inch, the uh, sharper the cut, uh, usually for a rip saw or something like that, the more, the, the higher number of teeth usually is a, a quicker cut or a, well, not a quicker cut, a smoother cut. And so usually you find that with a cross cut or even with a dovetail or a gentleman saw. So the carcass saw has a 14 TPI and it says a cross cut, it's called a carcass saw, but a carcass is a cross cut saw as opposed to a, a tenon saw, which I don't have. Uh, and then uh, this one, the cross cut, I can't even find it all. Here it is. That is a 16 uh, point TPI point. And then the dovetail saw, it's very, very hard to read. That's also 14, but it's a 14 rip. And of course, if you probably know, a rip saw is much different from a cross cut with the rip blade having a very sharp, coming down very sharply and then angling up. And those teeth come down and angle up, sort of in, like you see in this picture here. Whereas cross-cut, cross-cut blades are very much a triangle um, shape because, of course, they're cutting across the grain and um, giving you a different kind of cut. And so these two are cross-cut, and this is more of a rip because you're doing dovetails. So, and the other saw that I mentioned is a gentleman's saw. Now, I don't have the Veritas version of that. This is the one that I have, but I have used this for years. In fact, it was one of my first saws. This is a uh, B. Garlic and Son uh, from Sheffield. Bought it at a Woodcraft. Um, and this one, boy, I mean, this, you know, I started back in 2014-ish on the hobby end course, doing uh, woodworking professionally long before that, I don't know how many TPIs this is, but it's going to be probably very similar to the dovetail saw. So, uh, um, so this is another option. If you have one of these, this is good for dovetailing or, uh, you know, doing slots or something like that. Um, now, a rip cut, a rip saw is usually for ripping down the board, and a crosscut is for going across the grain. Very often you can use a uh, crosscut saw for ripping. In fact, my primary saw, my primary rip saw, which is just a Portland saw from Harbor Freight, this is a crosscut saw, but I use it as a rip because it works that way for me very well. And to go and buy a rip saw specifically, it would just be a lot of money. So um, this has worked fine for me. The idea being if you're using a cross cut for a rip, maybe your um, the two pieces won't be exactly uh, smooth. I don't know. I mean, that's what we have hand planes for, bench planes, stuff like that. I've not had any problems. So um, I am able to do that. Now. For my demonstration, the uh, put the dovetail to the side. This is just basic uh, wood from a hardware store, so pine or spruce or you know just your basic lumber. And so, when you're cutting, you probably want to have a piece of wood below this. But for this, I'm not probably going to go all the way through. And so, you're just going to see how this works. 
Um, let's do the let's do the carcass saw. I'll say the carcass saw. I like using if I've got a big thick piece of wood. I like to use that uh, for that purpose. The smaller the wood, I like to use the smaller cross cut. And there are two different cross cuts um, that they had. This was the 16. There's another one that's something else. For my purposes as a hobbyist. These two take care of all the cross-cut sawing that I do. So uh, let's go ahead and just... And if you notice, I'm using my thumb as sort of a little gate or wall, a fence, sort of as a fence to keep the saw in line. You can also, it's got this little um, part up here you can stick your finger in. If that helps you, it's not really necessary. So you see where that's going. So let's try the other one. This is, so that was the 14, this is the 16, so this is going to give a little more finer cut. Again, using my thumb as a fence to stabilize it. Now this one's taking a lot longer because it's got more teeth per inch compared to this one that has less. So this is going to give you a more of a rough cuff, but quicker. This can take longer, but be more fine, if that makes sense to you. Go. In the dovetail, going down as if we were doing a dovetail joint. What I like about this is it really caught in there fast. It really got in there, and so I can, so I don't have to have my thumb up as much. Of course, you're not going to make a big dovetail, so it works in really fast. So if you're making uh, something that has a lot of dovetails, you can usually just get in there and get right to right to work. Uh, um, that gentleman saw that I had, which does a very similar job. <laughs> Now, the TPI on this one is going to be much higher than the TPI on that one. You see what that can do. And again, it's not Veritas, but Veritas sells something like that. And so I'm sure theirs works just as well. So that gives you an idea of what the dovetail and the two cross cuts, the cross cuts and the carcass, what they can do if you're thinking about getting these for your workshop. And as I said, Veritas does make several others. They make a tenon, they make a different uh, cross cut, they make a gentleman saw. And it's not a promotion for Veritas, but this is what I've used in my workshop. You might be interested in using it in your workshop. They do work very well um, for what they're intended to do. So these are my Veritas back saws.